Well, it's time for another travolting development. I hope no one tries to hit me with a guitar while I enjoy this quick draw McGraw cartoon. Hmm. What was his alter ego's name? The one who hit people with a. Haha! <laughs> Guess who bought a helmet, motherfucker? Oh, shit. And Quick Draw McGraw's alter ego was El Kabong! It's a travolting development, his movies are kinda shit, 15 years without a hit, hey! It's John Travolta! Not quiet. Uh, no. No, I mean, not. it wouldn't be helpful to be quiet on a podcast. <laughs> My neighbors wouldn't say, he always kept to himself. <laughs> See, what, what, what you don't know is we're doing this experimental form of podcast where it's just silence. Welcome and to the, si the quiet cast, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I think we call that ASMR. Yeah, Which but, but it's just no one talking. It's just people breathing into the mic and ambient cricket noises. I think they call that hell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, or, or art. Oh, wow, that's lightning. Yeah. Speaking of hell, uh, welcome, everyone, to a brand new episode of Travolting Development, where today... <laughs> oh, God. God. God is not pleased oh, with Oh, man. A apparent, we have pissed off some higher powers today. It literally <laughs> did not start uh, storming until we came down here to record. <laughs> well, this is not a bit. This is... This is fucking dead ass. Uh, but anyway, we're here to talk about another uh, John Travolta <laughs> movie, and today that movie is Michael. A uh, little bit. Uh, let's. But but before I get into that, let's get uh, the introductions around. Of course, as always, I am here with my co-host. Uh, which way are we going? Mm -hmm. Let's go that way, Justin. What's up? It's Captain Shimmy. The guy. Hi, who's usually my in name. My name is Jonathan, and I thank it, God every day for this fat fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if the lightning strikes and this whole thing goes down, this is your fault. I want you to know that. Yeah. We're all going to blame Jonathan for this. Yeah. Maybe I want to die. Anyway, who else is here? <laughs> oh, it's Pearly Gate Pat. And today, we uh, found this out today, and we are happier than piggies and shitties. We have a special guest. Uh, it's kind of like a recurring thing now with your travolting development this is true you have been here for the last two travolting developments yeah the the one you you conspicuously dodged was the fanatic yeah i think it's unfair i think you have yeah, to I'm watch sure. the fanatic i'm sure that was coincident i, I think you're just gonna have to watch the fanatic now no. to be fair that was the first one we did yeah and then he's been on everyone since then so yes, it wasn't a true. recurring bit then but see frank what you don't know is i've set up an indiegogo for like a cent and if we meet this stretch goal you, have, <laughs> you personally have to watch the fanatic. <laughs> Just you. We're not doing it again. Yeah, you're not We've done it. Oh, time. God, no. I, I, I am not doing that a third time. <laughs> and and I own the movie. It, it was in the contract you signed. <laughs> yeah. God, this is contracts that popped up again out of nowhere. That <laughs> well, I mean, you signed them. You should be aware of them. <laughs> I didn't sign shit. And remember, I'm running the show now. You're signing shit today. Yeah, I already signed a lot of things. I had to electronically sign you, you our account for tpublic.com slash user slash Cajun Greatness. Yes, that. Uh, for the SoundCloud mm -hmm. that our stuff is hosted on. Yeah. I've had to sign a lot of stuff. My name's all over this shit. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. Anyway, Congratulations. Um, Congratulations. But, uh, Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. How's it feel to be an all-American? I got to pay. <laughs> anyway, uh, to kick this thing going unfortunately that's not a beer we don't have any of those today however it is a seven up which are quite delicious yeah it's not a beer it's a clear but it's spelled with two e's <laughs> is it weird that seven up is what got me into jazz music yes that is weird yeah was it an advert uh-huh along um, with the california raisins <laughs> that's what got me into motown oh yeah that was about the same time as the clapper <laughs> about uh 2001 or so oh, man 
We did this bit off See, the pod. Yeah, that, we that, that was a much better movie. bit, I have to say. <laughs> well, that Y'all are slacking. <laughs> well, Y'all are the, slacking on your clapper bit. Well, the first bit involved like it involved <laughs> actual motion and like f- like visual stuff because it was a fun bit. Hey, we're not above doing visual. Bits hey, on you know, this <laughs> show. he just had to be there. So I, I said, "Hey, Cannon, do the clapper," and he did. He did the clapper, and I flipped Jonathan off, and he, he did it again, and the, the finger went away. Clap That's on. hilarious. You just have to use your mouth. Clap off. Anyway, uh, look, Jack off. I think it's funny. Uh, I think it's uh, grand that we did uh, end up doing Michael because, you know, I've been mentioning the movie through several episodes of the show. And so what I decided to do was to pick eight Travolta movies. Now, I, I feel like, and we've talked about this. What was the common theme? Uh, the common theme of... John Travolta. Yes. Well, besides that. <laughs> well, besides that, I feel like the last two uh, Travolta movies we saw um, were, were kind of uh, <laughs> on the more enjoyable side of the spectrum. Oh, yeah. So I decided to pick <laughs> maybe the not so enjoyable side, and I picked eight, and I put them in a wheel. Uh, other than Michael, it included Urban Cowboy, Look Who's Talking, Speed Kills, Gotti, Old Dogs, Wild Hogs. And I'm convinced those are the same, <laughs> are the same movie. <laughs> they might exist in the same universe. I'm not going to lie. I and, think they're sequels. And uh, uh, finishing up that wheel was Killing Season, where uh, Travolta co-stars with Robert De Niro. And I'm not going to lie, half of these I also picked uh, judging on what his hair looked like in the movie. And his hair in Killing Season is stupid. And I can't wait <laughs> to, to get to that uh, noggin. But we are here to talk about the 1996 film... Michael, so um, I feel like we got the best end of this deal based on I, the options. You know what? Yeah, I really, I, yeah, yeah. I, I was I, just thinking that I think we dodged some bullets there. <laughs> seven, yeah, yeah seven other bullets. It was it was fantastic because I put them all. I just found a wheel uh, online and hit the button in front of all the roommates, and it showing up landing on Michael. I know Jonathan. Has been hoping we get to Michael very soon. I guess because I've been kind of hyping it up a little bit. Well, well, also too, like for like for some reason that's baked into my subconscious is the VHS copy. It was probably a '90s reissue of The Wizard of Oz. Had a commercial for My- Michael in front of it, <laughs> and, and it, they had like "Spirit in the Sky" as the song to yeah. it. And John Travolta's creepy ass fucking face on that album cover, just, or not album, the movie co- poster, just like, yeah, uh, that one uh, a poster shot that is like on all the VHSs, DVDs, Blu-rays, what have you. God forbid, there's a 4K re-release of this. <laughs> Come and, on, Criterion, and- <laughs> you fucking cowards. cowards! Released a 4K cut. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's the same shot, almost like uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I've mentioned it on the pod, but I know I've uh, talked to y'all about it. That with Lord of War, um, the promotional stuff and the trailers and even the the covers, it's the first shot of Nick Cage, the opening scene. And I'm just like, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's cool, but also kind of strange. It's kind of the same thing here. It's that same fucking poster, mm-hmm. and also it has a little uh, what was the dog? A ba- Baxter? Baxter? <coughs> Sparky. Sparky. Sparky? What the f- where the fuck did I get Baxter from? <laughs> from the mask. Because there was also a scene of the mask where Jim Carrey was trying to use the dog to get out of jail. Yeah, but those dogs were named, and I say those dogs because unfortunately I'm going to have to count the one from the sequel, Son of the Mask. Those dogs were named after Milo and Otis. Hmm. Oh. Speaking of things that oh. will never escape the wow. podcast. Yeah. Mm. Also, I just love how very graphic design is my passion that movie poster is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is like- literally John Travolta doing like a, a goofy Kubrick stare. And like a and like a Jack Russell Terrier in like the bottom left corner holding a, f- a feather. Like like I feel like if these scenes had like different music. This movie, this movie would be fucking horrifying. <laughs> All right, before before we get to the nitty gritty, let's do what we usually do. We're gonna go around the room, and since I'm calling the shots here, we're gonna start with Patrick. Oh, hello. Oh, we're going this way. Woo! Okay, so, we what? could just go random. Anchorman, the dog from Anchorman was back. So that was yeah. yeah. Okay. That's that's why. 
and dogs. <laughs> the superhero from Crayon Chin Cham is at Shin Bastard. So, if you haven't already, what would be your star rating on Letterboxd? And tell us a little bit of how you felt about the film. Okay. Um, now, I will say my star rating kind of belies how I feel about the movie. <laughs> I should say so. <laughs> I gave it a two and a half, but I didn't. It didn't not enjoy it. Yeah. It's you know, it's just like kind of like a really goofy like 90s movie but not unenjoyable but I, I do kind of feel like this uh, you know if you, if you don't see it you're not missing anything uh, but you know it, it's still it's still fun it's still uh, entertaining but and also Shimmy is just like <laughs> rubbernecking looking for spiders spider check I don't uh, <laughs> they're dead the fear and shimmy those were dead there, the there are new spiders they keep making more because we live in a hellscape look, look I even gave Patrick some protection for his birthday and you know well oh, that's my protection yeah, yeah, we got this handle I have phrasing. not seen a spider since yeah that's because we I'm spread. telling you that shit works and the first one we see since those last ones will be on my fucking shoulder if I'm not careful <laughs> always, shit they fuck always, you they always come for you oh shit it's right I will kill all of you <laughs> See, if, uh, it's the size of your face. See, if we learn anything from Gauntlet, the spiders keep coming because we haven't blown up the nest. It's they like, just infinitely spawn from. Excuse me, uh, Charlotte, how did you feel about the film? <laughs> Woo! Uh, wrong Charlotte. The, the one that had the whip. <laughs> you, you, you know, you can't, you can't convince me that woman isn't. Just, oh, oh, spoiler fuck. alert. That, see, that joke had. No, see, uh, spoiler alert, stupid. though. Charlotte with the web is dead. She dies at the end of the book. God, I. That, <laughs> Yes. What? Yeah. But this isn't the Charlotte's Web podcast, asshole. No, God. No, she ruined it for me. No, she faked her. No, no spoiler, spoiler warning Fuck. there. She <laughs> faked, she faked her death and became a wrestler. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, but, two and a half. But, no, never mind. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, the, the animated Charlotte's Web, when sh- the, the fucking spider dies, that shit traumatized me. I was like, I was not ready to deal with death at two years old. Well, I didn't like how all the little egg, like baby spiders floated away on webs to go populate the rest of the world, because that's awful. Fuck you. Spiders are the goddamn devil. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. Simi- also, that fucking song from that movie. See, Simi read Charlotte's Web where Charlotte was the villain. <laughs> that's how he interpreted it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, totally, right. I get totally Look, serious. if somebody can read Catcher in the Rye and think they should kill John Lennon, I'm going to read Charlotte's Web and think that spiders are the goddamn devil. <laughs> Honestly, that makes a lot it, more sense. It was <laughs> her. It was all her fault. Really, it was. Now, all right. So, so uh, Pat, two and a half stars. <laughs> yeah. Two and a half stars. Not bad. I might even put a heart by it. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. All right. Let's go with Jimmy. You know what? This movie, I, I watched it when I was a wee lad. Yeah. Many moons ago. And uh, I always remembered it vaguely and how fucking weird I thought it was. It's like something like a fucking fever dream of a movie. Even what? for the 90s, it really was. But on rewatching, I found it quite enjoyable. It's just a fun little fluff film. You know, it's it's not like a heavy drama. There's no world shattering stakes. It's just a... Nice little movie. I gave it three and a half stars. I quite enjoyed it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to Jonathan now. Okay, I am just really <laughs> ambivalent on I, this movie. This is this is the one I've been waiting for, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna let you know now. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint because I don't really have much of an opinion. It was a movie, like I just enjoyed it. it. Just. I just enjoyed the first 15 minutes of the movie, Jonathan continually going, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, because it was a bunch of like, we, like a fucking <laughs> bank blows, not blows we'll, we'll up. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> but like, yeah, I, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't underwhelmed because I wasn't expecting anything, but it was just like, I don't know, just like, I gave it two and a half stars as well, but I mean, that was just because it was the most like middle of the road. If this movie was a food item it would be wonder bread <laughs> well, are you sure it wouldn't be milk sugar it would be no. sugar no yeah raw unprocessed <laughs> sugar <cane. laughs> all right so postman frank what we thinking uh i like this movie i liked it when it came out and like shimmy i pretty much have the same opinion about i would give it three and a, three and a half it's a nice movie it's 
uh, you know, it's not a fantastic movie or something that I would suggest on <laughs> a list of movies to watch, but it's a good watch. I mean, it's, it's a feel-good movie. It has one little part in it where you go, ew, until it gets fixed. Yeah. But it does get fixed, so there's a happy ending there. So it's a nice, feel-good movie, and it's there's nothing in it that is ridiculously awful, like some of Travolta's movies. Yeah, like that, that's the thing with me. It, it was like nothing too terrible, nothing too great either. It's yeah. just and plus it has a really cute dog in it, and I'm a sucker for dogs. Oh, that dog was cute as fuck. There's a lot of dogs in this movie. Actually. A lot of dogs actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I too. Um, uh, because I'm a psychopath, I would watch uh, the same movie probably every day for about two weeks when I was younger. I don't know why. I, I did the same thing. A lot. Yeah. I, I, wow, I did the same thing too. Damn, holy crap. I think children just have hyperfixations. Uh, it would always be on, you know, uh, <coughs> uh, I think stars. Like they would play it like, you know, like twice a day somewhat. And um, it's been forever since I've seen it. It's still as uh, silly as I remember. And, again, not great. But I must say, it's not terrible. It is definitely not a fanatic. Let's say that. (laughs) I am... uh, I'm giving it a three. Nice. nice. I can see that. Yeah, it's like... I don't know. Like... (laughs) I, might I guess after we watch The Fanatic, it puts every other movie into perspective. I mean, I, I, as of now on Travolta and Development, that is the bottom of the scale. Uh, I really don't know what else could, like, knock like, it out except like maybe Battlefield, Battlefield Earth. Earth. Gotti. Even, I think even Gotti then, can do it. Gotti was bad. Oh, you've seen Gotti. I've seen Gotti. Oh, God. You know, I was but kind of excited. But as bad for, as The Fanatic, though? The Fanatic at least kept my attention. Gotti, I, I wanted... <sighs> If I had the the opportunity to do so with an injury, if I could have shoved a spoon up my ass during Gotti just so I could feel something, oh. I would have done it. <laughs> I was so fucking bored the entire time. Because it's not even funny bad. It's just, my God, John Travolta financed this movie himself because he is a maniac and he is <laughs> terrible. Yeah. So, yeah. Like the fanatic is aggressively bad, but at least it keeps your attention. I, I think that gives you a little bit of hint. If you hear a movie is really driven by John Travolta, <laughs> avoid that shit like the plague. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the financier. Well, other than uh, John Travolta, this film is uh, also stars Andy McDowell, William Hurt, Bob Hoskins, R.I.P. Robert uh, Pastorelli, also R.I.P. Uh, Gene Stapleton. That was Pansy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and the rest of the people that were in this movie. Joey Lauren Adams and Carlo Gugino. Yes, or yeah. Gugino. However you pronounce your name. Yeah. And the kind rest. Kind of a weirdly stacked mm. cast. Yeah, yeah. Like, there were a few, like, I forgot Joey Lauren Adams was in it. I forgot Carla uh, Gugino, or Gugino, however yeah. you say her name, was in this movie. I had, like, I looked up the cast, and it said Bride under I was like, oh bright and then like bark, bark. I was like oh okay and what's kind of funny is the same thing happened in another Andy McDowell movie Groundhog Day which is one of my favorites there's a married couple at the end who come up to Bill Murray and the groom is played by Michael Shannon in his first movie role huh. oh, the, wow. the future General Zod yep. among many other horrifying characters he's played <laughs> well, well I think Michael Shannon is just kind of a horrifying looking guy yeah, like, and, like and, he looks spooky and in yeah. Groundhog Day he's still you, you can clearly tell it's him and he's being all happy and shit and they're giving tickets to Wrestlemania and he's all excited and the whole time I'm just thinking like Superman needs to watch his back because this motherfucker crazy yep yeah, I, I don't trust a man whose eyes are that far apart. It's like Jack Nicholson. No matter what they play, you're pretty sure they're insane. Yep. <laughs> because they might be insane. <laughs> you know, in it, the membrane. It's funny you bring that up because, um, you know, I tried to find interesting factoids about this movie. You know, <laughs> interesting behind the scenes stories. If tried, you found more than not. three, I'd be shocked. You know what? I don't even think I found that because. I, I got nothing. I'm just going to go ahead and let that out. I do oh, have things to say, but since you said uh, Jack Nicholson, uh, apparently, according to IMDb, mm. uh, he was offered the role of Michael. 
and of course turned it down. That would have been a horror film. Could you imagine, Michael, this movie starring Jack fucking Nicholson? That would be (laughs) spooky. It'd be a, it would be a different movie. They would have had to pull some sort of bait and switch. Turns out it's fucking Lucifer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm also just like just trying to imagine his him in place at John Travolta. So like all these scenes would just be either more frightening or just more gross. Like when he comes down the stairs in his boxers and he's just like all <laughs> slovenly and just trying to think of like that the same uh, uh, Jack Nicholson that's on a boat as an old man, just like being this a gross blob, is just like this is. Oh, like I more imagine un- him with a, a coat of slime. <laughs> They're trying to do a sequel. A sequel to Mike. Uh, yeah, I don't like anything I, about that. I read that apparently Who the fuck asked my John Travolta. Apparently, it's been in the works for nearly twenty years. Oh wow. As I said earlier, John Travolta is driving this thing. And according to you this, uh, John Travolta calls his work in Michael yeah. his finest work. You know what? Didn't he say his finest work was in Fanatic, though? Or didn't well, he say something along those well, lines? He, he, may have said that at the, he may have said that at the time. This is my finest work. Presently. I don't know. This is IMDb. Anybody can go in here and edit shit. So. Well, I do have a, a little nifty fat. It, okay. so, it sounds kind of insane. Apparently, uh, John Travolta took 500 hours of Spanish lessons in preparations for this film. And when asked why, he said, just in case. And uh, how many uh, lines of dialogue <laughs> did he speak in Spanish in this film, everyone? Cero. 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 <laughs> like, absolutely not. So, um, if you didn't know what you were getting into, if you've never seen a trailer to this film, uh, the opening scene, uh, like Jonathan mentioned earlier, is just, uh, you see two people uh, walk into a bank, and um, you don't know who these people are at the time. I mean, you can obviously see that it's John Travolta, but you don't know what the gimmick is just yet. And uh, they walk out, and then the people that work at the bank walk out, and then a little storm blows through, and then no wind... No rain, no nothing. The building just collapses. Yeah, yeah. yeah just <laughs> Michael did it. Yep, like something out of a silent film. It just folds over. Yeah. It's like I, I was thinking because like, what it's happening is like, is this like a, a like a visual bit, like a CG bit? Like no, it just like falls over like a cardboard box. <laughs> and, and then with like this, you know, opening credits montage, you, you know the usual shit. But there is this one like long shot of a train going by. And I swear to god there is a weird cut for no reason in the middle of it. Yeah, cuz I like like cuz it goes and then the car changes color and keeps going and it's like Cause what the fuck? Yeah, I think I remember where you're... T- uh, I think I know what you're talking about, because at first it was like freight cars, they were carrying something, and then it like immediately cuts to like, you know, uh, cars that like people would be in or something. I didn't notice that. I was too distracted by the Randy Newman song. Yeah. Yeah. Randy <laughs> Newman did the music for this movie. During the movie where I was like, who the fuck is this Randy <laughs> Newman motherfucker? Yeah, like, and then right as I say that, <laughs> original song by Randy Newman. <laughs> It was like, wow, I fucking called it. That was great timing. And then we're like, and then we are introduced to pretty much the rest of the main cast. We got William Hurt and uh, Robert Pastorelli, who play people who work for a tabloid newspaper. Uh, uh, William Hurt plays uh, Frank Quinlan, who is their best uh, reporter. And uh, Huey Driscoll is the owner of the paper's mascot, Mm -hmm. which is the doggy. Yep. And they're shooting Christmas photos, and then a bunch of white kids come out dressed as Eskimos. Yes, it was uh, the sort of thing that wouldn't fly in a movie these days. No. Well, uh, what I, yeah, I yeah. think but when they get to the paper, the et, the owner of the paper complains because they were Indians dressed as Eskimos. Yeah. And he says that Americans want to see Americans. Yeah. In his that paper, was said. and, and see, I was like, "It's like I, that's 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 kind of meta compared to what we yeah. were thinking." What it's like, I, I, yeah, because we want our uh, Amer- indigenous American stereotypes played by the people themselves. <laughs> because yeah. any other thing would just be disrespectful. Yeah, I, I will say I think Eskimo is no longer kosher. kosher. Yeah. Oh shit, Eskimo is no longer kosher. That's cute. That's. Mm. Yeah, I don't think kosher is kosher. Anymore. Yeah, that, you're, 
Wow, the irony is thick. <laughs> hey, you know what? I think there's some cancellations coming. So y'all. Well, he said it first. I said Inuit. <laughs> Don't try to gaslight me now. All right, so the show well, right well, now at this is point, down to we're me, all Cannon. Fucked. <laughs> well, all right. Well, guess what? Hey, we got to start over now. It it's down to me, Cannon, and Frank. Yeah. All right, so uh, well, never mind. I go to free speech. All right, trail. so we go to uh, the main <laughs> cast now, who work for a tabloid newspaper, and um, uh, fuck. Bob uh, Frank Frank Quinlan, uh, he just discards uh, the Rorschach Journal and finds this letter about this little uh, milk hotel uh, that there might be an angel on the premises. Uh oh! Snap. So they're like, hey, uh, let's go check this out. Because uh, um, a dog guy was about to get fired because he got the um, their uh, Christmas tree. And apparently it was huge. He fucked it up. He fucked it up. And the only way they could get it transported was to saw it in half, basically. And to save his job, uh, Frank uh, gives him the credit for finding this angel in the middle of Iowa. Is yes. that yeah. correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cornfields for miles. For miles and miles, you see. So they go there, and lo and behold, there's John Travolta with some wings. Yep. <laughs> Those were wings. <laughs> a out of shape 40 year old John Travolta in his boxer shorts mm-hmm. coming down the stairs, scratching his balls. Getting <laughs> like, I was half, I, like, I was half expecting. Like little with wings, cu- little cupids be on his fucking boxers <laughs> if they weren't not on there already. I yeah, that, that, that might have been a little too on the nose. <laughs> yeah, let's let's not let's not glance over um, the subtlety of Michael. <laughs> you, know, you have a Pansy, the owner of um, this uh, motel, the Milk Bottle Motel, the Milk Bottle Motel, so named because there's a giant milk, milk bottle up. bottle in the front, which they. Uh, apparently, almost miss driving. Uh, it was like, well, damn, Iowa. there it was. Hey, it's, stop here, stop here, stop here. around. The God. only thing that isn't corn, and they almost <laughs> miss it. This, this movie. Okay, okay, as far as that goes, I'm going to have to give them a break on that because there's many a times I've been running my mouth driving and missed my turn. <laughs> yeah, there. Were a, you looking for a 20 foot tall no, milk bottle, no, I Frank? Wasn't, I, 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 it was not marked by a giant 20 foot milk bottle, but you know, it's been a turn that I've turned at. You know, there's many a lot of, times before. There's a lot of oversized things, like in novelty this movie. roadside yeah. attractions. Well, that like, is because that's Michael's thing. He wants to see the biggest bottle of twine. Yeah, the, the largest frying uh, pan, non-stick, non-stick frying pan. pan. You don't forget that little factoid. And I, I guess that's why he was at the milk bottle inn is because it was the biggest milk bottle. I mean, I hope but it I, wasn't. Filled he got there because the uh, the old woman prayed for him. Remember, she she said that in the beginning. The, the old woman was going to have all her hotel and house and whatnot repossessed by the bank, so she prayed and prayed. And that's why the bank bank was destroyed. Yeah, and Michael showed up and they destroyed the bank. And the, Hell yeah! And the old lady's played by the, uh, the Edith Bunker from All in the Family. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> for all you old sitcom fans out but there, but before we even <laughs> see Michael, um, they're all sitting down, and then she, um, a Pansy, fakes her own death for some reason. No, she has a coughing fit, and they think she's dying. Yeah. So they touch her, and she's like, "Don't touch me! I'm contemplating my death." <laughs> and then Michael comes down, like we said, in his boxer, smoking, grabs a beer. And his nuts. And his nuts. <laughs> like, oh, really, yeah, he grabbed like, a fucking handful of sack. Really, like, how uh, much, like, cloth or stuffing do you think Travolta had down there? Because it, it looked full. Like, when he started scratching, the whole fucking boxer moved, right? Yeah. It looked like he just got some, like, like grocery like, bags. Like, like, he reached from, like, the there's, middle of his gooch and started, like, <laughs> pulling for What also... There's I, some gym socks in there. Oh, also, yeah. so, let, uh, I'm, I'm already uh, skipping ahead. We we have to forget that Andy McDowell, who plays Dorothy Winters, is with them, who is a, uh, uh, air quotes, angel expert in this film. Oh, yeah. Because it's, it, it, it is a tad boy, and I guess, like, that's her niche. But, you see, here, here's the thing this is the part that really got me like that came together really quick like in that office uh-huh. it's like the boss it's almost like like even she looked confused it was like oh she's an angel expert she's well, an expert on I mean, angels that's because uh and we're getting into a little 
Oh, I just got attacked by a moth. Uh, you know, we're getting towards the end where things are revealed, but yeah. w- what had happened before they burst in the office, she was sitting there applying for the job because she was a dog trainer. Yes. And so Bob Hoskins was planning on firing William Hurt and guy number two Yes. Uh, and keeping the dog. And so he didn't want them to know that I'm going to fire them and keep the dog, and this lady's a dog trainer. So he's like, no, you're hired. She's an angel expert. Don't don't uh, second guess me. I'm the editor. I'm Bob Hoskins, angel expert. I am Super Mario. Yep. We are farmers. <laughs> bum, ba dum, bum, 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 bum. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. But they could be. But they all. <laughs> J.K. Simmons, uh, are you listening? So everyone from the tabloids, think, are, Pat, think. They, they, go, <laughs> they go to their rooms freaking out because, uh, oh my God, they have seen an angel. Like they haven't even got like up close and personal to the wings yet. They're all just like, wait, what? Oh. They are, they're already like by, buying this hook, line, and sinker. Oh no! There was a moment that it's my favorite John Travolta quote of all time so far because I can't remember that many and I hate most of them, but. They they were looking at his wings and like can we can we touch can we pull all touch them and whatnot uh, and he said well pull on your pecker and see how that's attached yeah yeah the dog which was just <laughs> he out wanted of to know how the wings were attached and uh, that is uh, Michael, Michael told him did. how wings work yeah they work like dicks on your back <laughs> yeah and then we're not feathers. talking about the fact how this motherfucker eats cereal yeah he where had- he takes frosted flakes and milk two things that are already pretty sweet. And then literally takes like a fucking five pound box of fucking sugar and just dumps it in there. Like at one point he takes like his spoonful of cereal and digs it into the sugar. I thought it was a reasonable amount of (laughs) sugar for frosted flakes. And this is why Shimmy will have diabetes. (laughs) I thought. Do you put sugar on frosted flakes? I don't usually eat frosted flakes. But I remember the last time I did, they didn't taste that sweet, and they needed the sugar. They tasted like <laughs> slightly sweeter cornflakes. Jimmy, I do think I think you just bought flakes. I, I do think they tamed, they, they've like tamed down the sugar content of the children's sh- cereals now because they got so much shit about it from the uh, Saturday cartoons pushing the tons of sugary s- cereal. Probably well, don't so. worry. I, I think I think um, ser- sweet sh- uh, cereals made a rebound with Sour Patch Kids cereal and don't Churro s- cereal. I hate all of the things you just said. But but Sammy, we were, there was a f- we were getting ready patch. for the for the cereal taste test round two, where we find the most obnoxious cereal and try it on the podcast. I I don't. I will not be participating. The only the only way bunch of bitches. The only way I will put Sour Patch Kids cereal in my mouth is for content. <laughs> like it's it's not, not actually, buying. it's literally just a candy in milk. I'll I'll That's I'll participate. Are we going to give grape nuts another try? If you want no. me to participate, I will, but I will do so under protest. <laughs> on the pretense of what? Oh, no, on the pro, I'll, I'll protest. Oh, this is terrible, Munch Munch. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, damn, those bastards! Oh, yeah. Poor <laughs> <laughs> me eat cereal. It's like the Taco Bell taste test. Oh, how dare you invite me to eat all this delicious Taco Bell? Oh no! <laughs> so, so Quinlan <laughs> is uh, calling his boss, telling man, real wings, dead ass. I was like, well, boss man wants him to Chicago. They're like, well, can we get him on a plane? No, we can't get him on a plane because his wings won't fit in the seats. Well, does he fly? Uh, we don't know just yet. So, next morning, well, like we said, how they're eating breakfast with the Frosty Flakes. Uh, while Pansy is cooking eggs, uh, she dies. For like, real, for real, for real this yeah. time. Another coughing fit. This time she does not recover. Mm-hmm. And, and it's like, <laughs> she coughs, eggs spill into the pan, Cut to graveside. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Okay, it's- so we don't have uh, spiders. <laughs> well, what is that? A ladybug? <laughs> that looks like some sort of beetle, or perhaps yeah, a it, it, it's some kind of little square bug I've been seeing a lot around. I, I, have, I feel like I haven't noticed him before. Mm. I told you. I told you we're all in danger. Oh. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And, and during the funeral, we find out that Dorothy also writes country western songs as, as a, a hobby. hobby. She and died I, cooking us breakfast. Every time Andy McDowell sang, yeah, except for the one song she did with an actual band, but every time she sang a cappella, I cringed so hard yeah. that you could have stuck a bit of coal in my ass and it would have made diamond. 
Oh man! Yeah. I mean, just I like, was, it was not good. Uh, yeah, I, was, I, I was crawling in my skin. These wounds they will not heal. And it's yeah. it's not that she was out of key. She was in key. She's not a bad singer. Is it? It's not even that the songs were dumb because they're supposed to be dumb. It's just she is in those early '90s movies as an actress so painfully awkward in every single scene that she's in in everything she's in. It's tough to watch. And like sometimes it works. Like Groundhog Day it works really well. This movie it did not work so well. Like the singing just took it over the top for me. Yeah, I have to agree. I I, I forgot how weird those parts were and uh, but again, like you said, once she had an actual like full arrangement behind her, she actually sounded pretty good. Yeah, no, that wasn't bad at all. I enjoyed that song. So um, after Pansy dies, it's like, well, time to go to Chicago. So the only way they're going to do it is to drive because there's some there's some shit along the way that Michael wants to see. Uh, he also gives like weird little tidbits along the way. Like he tells uh, he tells Frank uh, Quinlan that uh, he is going to owe him an apology if he goes. No, no like he's going to owe him an apology in the near future. Because, again, he tells Dorothy, hey, you're going to sing for me. He goes, okay, not now, when I tell you to. And I'm just like, shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's why I said, like, if this had, like, a, if this was shot differently, had different music or whatever, this would be a fucking horror movie. Because this man, <laughs> I know he, he has to be brainwashing all these women. Because there is no way in hell... <laughs> These women would be dropping their panties oh, yeah. as is, fast as these as these women are for fucking John Travolta. You're right. There's no way in hell he's from heaven. Yeah, he's from there. Ah, ha, ha. Fuck it on me for bad jokes. Ah, fuck ah, you. Ah, See, everyone else tells bad jokes except when Shimmy tells bad jokes. Then they're fine bad jokes. <laughs> Because, well, it's because well, I really sell them with a big, stupid smile. Yeah, you can't see his smile. That's really what sells the joke. But you can hear but, it. You, you, if you listen closely, you can hear that shit-eating grin. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just hear it like like fucking door hinges that need WD-40. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> One thing I was disappointed by in uh, Michael was that when he was smoking a, a cig at the breakfast table, he, he wasn't doing it in that just extra way he was doing <laughs> in Broken Arrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he didn't quite have the the same, um, didn't have the same, uh, what do you say, je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> As Broken Arrow, because, man, he, he was smoking the shit out of some cigarettes in that movie. I'm gonna do he it. was smoking them in this movie, too, but I guess, you know, he had to, you know, you know pump the brakes because, you know, he was an angel. But yeah, but he's Same also just like angle. a maybe brainwashing women to having sex with them, <laughs> and just like he's just a being of just sloth. Well, and I, I think yeah, he's like I really gross. Yeah, I don't know. I like, think you're skipping over the 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 actual intro of that statement. Is like every time they go to a restaurant or a bar or anywhere that there's people, the women there just start staring at him and following him him around, uh, like they're just hypnotized. To the yeah. point where about halfway through this movie, he has a, a gaggle of women all around him. I'm like, damn, John Travolta's about to have a train run on him. <laughs> yeah, like it, it, an entire bar uh, full of women. And then it Leave. starts a bar fight. Because yeah. all the, all the red that's the dude, movie this is. It's just like, well, damn. I mean, we skipped over the first fight between John Travolta and the bull. Oh God! That was pretty great. Which was like I love that. That straight was awesome. up a Looney Tune gag, yeah. where he just sees a bull out in the pasture and he's just like battle, and he just just runs headlong into it, and then you hear like coconuts clank, and then it's like the the bull sitting on its butt, just like just spinning its head, like, like you hear the little twitty birds, like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, then we get into this huge bar brawl. Um. And fucking nerd ass William Hurt just like throwing haymakers at these rednecks. I mean, hell, they go straight like um, a back to back blank man style, just ready to go. Back to back badass. My name is William, and I'm dropping the hurt. Bam, bam. <laughs> yeah, he's Doo -doo. well, he was pissed. They just hit his friend in the face trying to hit him, so he's double pissed right now. <laughs> I'd be mad too. Like, oh well, shit, I'm about to hit somebody. Uh, well, that. And, and plus, it seems like no matter what happens, and if there's a road trip movie, there's gonna be like a, a, the the uh, prerequisite bark. Yeah, 
Because, like, that also didn't make sense because, like, you know, like, of course, you know, Michael's stirring up shit because every, um, everyone's wife, girlfriend, what have you, is, like, all up on him right now. Mm-hmm. And... And then, like, but when William Hurt, uh, when uh, Frank shows up, this dude, I remember the same dude, just random dude number four just goes, hey, you, and just swings on him. Like, who are you and why are you swinging on this random dude right now? I guess he's like, you're with the the Lomax that just stole my wife. It's like, what in the actual F, sir? (laughs) Being rude for rude sake. Have you never been in the boonies at a redneck bar? Uh, yeah. That shit just happened. I've been to several of them. Yeah, that shit I am well-versed in the boonie bar, okay? Yeah, you know <laughs> the boonie bar. You know that shit just happens. To <laughs> Drank at him, played at him. Yeah. You know, you, know, you know when, like, you know, Jebediah and his wife, you know, Gargax are like... <laughs> <laughs> This, this bitch a fucking alien. <laughs> like, like, you walk into that... Um, like, this is a plot of a Stephen King book. You walk into that fucking house, and this fucking bitch is like, bring me that shield drink. <laughs> and they're just, like, snorting, like, crushed up uh, Xanax the, on the back of a commode. Oh, my God. Spider fucking alert. That one is huge. The fuck did I tell oh, you? What did God. I tell you, people? What did I tell wow. you? Wow. It was wasn't on now. you. Chill out. Frank yeah. got it. Until it was on this headed side for me. Table. No, it was, it was actually, it was actually going that way. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so they, uh, the Angel Gang is now in jail. And I, I, didn't, I didn't notice. Was the dog in there with him? Uh, no, he was in the jail, but he was in the, in the cell. The, the, uh, the sheriff or deputy, whatever. The jailhouse dog bed. was on the outside. <laughs> in, the, in the jail and set it next to the desk. And the guy was just like, Sparky, Sparky, get the keys out of the drawer. And Sparky's just like a dog. Going, okay, I'm gonna sleep. <laughs> and that is when Michael uh, requests the apology, but it's not for him. It is for Dorothy. Mm-hmm. He, he says some smart ass to Dorothy. Because yeah. William hurt some feelings. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, there's a again. there's a there's a running uh, bit in the film where she has been married three times. She has. Uh, we find out through the course of the movie that she has been. Uh, divorced three times, yeah. and she writes uh, songs about them. Well, did I mean, Taylor Swift watch this? When was Taylor <laughs> Swift born? <laughs> no, when was Taylor well, Swift well, born? I mean, there was there was always Taylor Swift, but "Tear in My Beer" songs have s- existed since. Country. Oh yeah, but I mean, but Taylor that's "Tear in My Beer" though. Taylor Swift would have been about ten or so when this came out, oh. if I recall. Correctly. I feel like I thought she was born in ninety six. No, I thought she was born earlier. Damn, am I older than? Taylor Swift? Because either she's as old as me or she's a she's old as my sister, who's who was born the year this movie came uh, out. And then we cut to a courtroom. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, like like this like that bar fight with Taylor Adam. Swift is thirty one. Okay, so oh, okay. we're the same age. Yeah, she was born in eighty nine. So she would have been about eight when this came out. Ish. Seven or eight ish. So yeah, sure. We're gonna find that here. interview where she's like, Man, my favorite movie is uh Michael. All right, so uh, we get courtroom to the courtroom scene, scene and uh, Michael gets everybody out of trouble with the power of penis, I guess. His, <laughs> his mojo, yeah, baby. The, the judge is uh, Terry Gar, right? Yeah, Terry yes. Gar. Yeah, I, my <laughs> first thought was, let's have a roll in the hay. Yep, yeah, from, Frankenstein. Uh, from Frankenstein. Yeah. Because she played the assistant in that. Uh, well, I think they had a role in the hay in that I'm fucking sure back office. I'm pretty sure they got out of, the, out of uh, court trouble. Well, oh, damn. I wish I had a guardian angel that would just fuck my problems away. And like, like uh, traffic uh, ticket, <laughs> banging. It was just funny. That, that judge was having uh, none of the um, the tabloid gang, except for Michael, you know, for, you know, obviously. She had him all night long. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, don't, I mean, it, it had to have been at least, like, I, I don't know. How long was it? Because if if you if I'm you're, you're if you 30. are your if you're the friends waiting on a, a situation like that, you're just like, man, hurry the fuck up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if they were leaning into the comedy, it would have just like done a, a clock a counterclockwise wipe on the scene, and everyone's still in the courtroom, and it just is 45 minutes later, and then the judge walks out with her hair messed up and her robes on backwards, like you can go, <laughs> like that would have been that's a Zucker Brothers type. It's like y'all off. bust this nut so he can get out of here. <laughs> they did not go full slapstick in this, though. No, I think that would have yeah. helped a lot, though. Uh, yeah, like I feel like if it, it should have went more sentimental drama or just like wacky they, they crazy. Were, yeah, they were kind of middle of the road, trying to yeah. stay with the being a realistic movie mm-hmm. instead of slapstick. 
Like if they had leaned but more there's towards also angels and shit. But too. yeah, the they yeah. should have leaned more towards airplane and less towards like phenomenon, which is another Travolta movie that is very maudlin as fuck. You see, I actually enjoy that movie. That's why I didn't put that on the wheel. It wasn't a bad movie, but yeah. it is very maudlin. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm actually <laughs> looking forward to that. But uh, speaking of things to look forward to, uh, be looking forward to whatever is about to play for this brief intermission because it's about that time. We have a bit more to say, so we're going to take a quick break. Yeah, and a we word from t- our sponsor, yeah. Oh, from our sponsors. Yeah. Oh, we got those it's now. Canvas, yeah. the farting porn star. So, <laughs> hey, guys, I'm ready. We shall return yeah. after a quick word from our sponsors. <laughs> well, hey there, folks. Do you like mugs, T-shirts, phone cases, stickers, wall art, pillows, all sorts of fun things with fun logos? Well, if you do, head on down to tpublic.com slash user slash caging greatness for all sorts of great merchandise and support your local creators. That's us. Hooray. This is the, the book of Cardi B and, and all these other uh, female the, rapper, like the the funniest, my neck and my back. It's yeah, all going to be the Bible. The funniest, thing, Wait. the funniest thing I've heard about that, though, was somebody talking about how uh, listening to that uh, uh, little, what, what's, the, what's the guy who had the video? Of little Nas X. Talking? Little Nas X mm-hmm. would make your kids gay. And somebody replied, well, just uh, make them listen to WAP and they'll, they, they'll turn back straight. Isn't that how that works? Uh, like it, <laughs> his new video is even gayer. Oh, yeah. I just love how he's just a fucking troll. Oh yeah, he's he, he's his TikTok is uh, cinema. Oh yeah, by the way, welcome back everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that commercial. <laughs> Am I about to go back in free speech jail? And yes, I have seen Little Nas X's new video, and it is again fantastic. It's like <laughs> it's about goddamn time I mean, we're getting some gay shit on the mainstream. Goddamn event. I feel yeah, bad yeah. because I like the guy. I like his TikTok. I like his his Twitter. He's funny. I want him to succeed. I just don't particularly like his songs uh, musically. They're not my taste. Yeah, that's homophobic, Mister. <laughs> I don't think that's accurate. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Justin's canceled. Are, Jimmy, are you gonna tell me what what oh, is is it homophobic? Oh, 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 oh. No, no, no. No, no, if we're talking about love for an artist making you homophobic or not, which one of us has a Freddie Mercury section of their wall? Because I'm telling you, it's me. I got a small section. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I'm just saying, if musical taste dictate it, then I think I'm on a good side of the spectrum here. For now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, See, you had one good take, one bad take. Now you're, uh, you're yeah, uh, net to, neutral. You're net back neutral. to neutral. <laughs> Okay. We're keeping an eye on you, mister. <laughs> You're walking a, th- a thin line. Well, you two are already canceled, so who... Well, like, who are you canceled? <laughs> that is true. You said Eskimo, and then he said I Tocher. said anyway. No, we didn't say anything, right? And you fucking said it just now, Buster. <laughs> I was quoting you. Oh, my God. I, bitch, roll back the <laughs> I, know, I know editing shit is going to be a doozy Bro. this week. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, they, Michael. we're out of jail now. <laughs> well, we're not. Well, we're, we're not. We're still in. <laughs> After this movie <laughs> predicted the finale to Seinfeld. Yeah, <laughs> they left jail like we're we walk in. It's just like they, they prisoner <laughs> exchange program. I was like, what's the deal with our plate food? Anyway, <laughs> jail. <laughs> <laughs> it's a show about nothing. That's, that's, so how do we know when it's over? Oh my god that, We don't know I don't know why That may have been The funniest thing That's happened tonight Jail <laughs> <laughs> Alright oh, so man. We're on the road Back to Chicago uh, And uh, I forget They uh, They stop No they didn't stop The tire pop because he wanted to see the frying pan. He wants to see the not, the world's largest nonstick frying pan. There was a great bit <laughs> that Jonathan had. Like, it's like Michael is just being like a, a shitlord in the back seat of the car. And he's like, and he's like, oh, I want to go to the frying pan. You got ten seconds to pull over and take me. And then it, they're like, as as he's counting to go down a hill, you hear a pop after he counts to three, and it's like John's like, he got fucking shot. <laughs> that, for a split second, I legit thought, oh shit, they killed him. Like the car comes on the other side of the hill, and there's just like a hole and just a splatter of red on the windshield. <laughs> what the fuck? And it's just like, 
Uh, but then he like he shoots back up and can't kill me, bitch. It's like that probably would have happened in the Jack Nicholson cut. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. Well, in the Jack Nicholson cut, he would have been the one with the gun, and he's pointing at them to take him through the frying pan. Oh man! So we go to frying pan town, and uh, I forget what happened after that. Well, the tire popped, and that's when they get picked up by the newlyweds. Oh weds. yes, the newlyweds. They weds. have a pie. Yes. they have the whole discussion about pie. They, they go to the uh, pie only restaurant. They have a whole and, table and makes the pie. chick sing the pie song that is okay, but the way she yeah, sang it was awful. Just more cringe. And then Andy McDowell actually gets on stage with a full band and does the song she wrote about her three ex husbands, and it was really good. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was funny. We all did that. The closed captioning stopped. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when she was singing. like, just said. She sings this song, and then they was just fucked off. It was done. <laughs> They're like, nope, not doing it. Nope. Mm-hmm. I, I just love the bit. Did it that, ever come back? Yeah, it, after it, the song was over. Yeah. Wow, like, the, the movie just said, It just skipped shit. the song. It's like, all right, I'm out. And the song's, yeah. I thought it was a great bit that she's like, she gets up with her notebook, and she just hands a piece of notebook paper to the band that just like, just has like her pencil written lyrics on it. Probably no actual like bars or music like, script on there just like here just you know bullshit it it's like she told them the key to start in and they just went they're just noodling yeah and it turned out to be a number one hit single (laughs) and you know that song was so good that her and uh, William Hurt they just went to fuck town this was around the time that Kevin Smith gave uh, uh, Joey Lauren Adams time off the set of uh uh, chasing Amy to come hang out with the, with the crew. Yeah, <laughs> and they have just pie everywhere. God, and that and that, that's what I want to do now. I want to figure out a place nearby that just has a stupid amount of pie. I want us to go there and just order slices of fucking everything and just go to town. That yeah. sounds like a fun time to me. That does sound like a good day. I would have a. Uh, that okay. sounds like highway to diabetes. It's fine. I'm probably already there at this <clears> point. <throat> I mean, <laughs> it's that one ACDC song that's not as catchy. I'm on a highway to diabetes. Uh, <laughs> and then, <laughs> see, see, that was actually the preliminary version that the the, uh, the guy was like, you know what, we, we need to punch this up a little bit. Yeah, we need to rewrite this. I don't think it's going to be as popular as we're hoping. But, but we need to tell people about the dangers of like high sugar diets and, and a sedentary lifestyle. But, and then when Dorothy is singing, you see Frank. With a little twinkle in his eye. Not that, Frank. No. Yeah. Not that. <laughs> William Hurt. I always have the twinkle in my eye. <laughs> you know, we're a little concerned. It's just, it's a little distracting, yeah. actually. <laughs> it might be astigmatism. You need to get that checked out. Yeah. <laughs> or he just, I just got the new glasses. Thing. Or he just has a piece of metal just stuck in there and it's just constantly catching the light. <laughs> Could be. Frank just jumped off the set of a J.J. Abrams movie. Yeah. Just lens flare all day. It's like, and then everybody just, like, goes to bed. You got Frank and Dorothy. They uh, go to bed together. Take forever to go they to take, bed. They had that long, awkward, oh, you want to come to my room? No, you go to my room? Oh, yeah, I want to go to your room. Yeah. Like they're just <laughs> like they're and just, then uh, on the way up, it, they take like four stops because they can't. Yeah. They they're, they're like teenagers. They can't like get their hands off each yeah. other. It's like fucking uh, that scene I've never from been the office that <laughs> where like Michael and um, oh, I forgot her name. Uh, the, the waitress. Joey Lauren Adams. No, I was no, I was talking, talking about, about the office, office is Michael now. now. That that oh. ne- never mind. It was just a scene where like they were like, oh, they got oh, trouble fuck. for PDA. I was I was lost. I will say that the one in this movie it seemed really awkward and passionless. Yes, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it was. I didn't really get the sense that they were trying to fuck on the steps. I felt like they were trying to hit their marks as they go up the steps. And there was no real chemistry. And make it yeah. look like they were wounding to kiss Which, each other. To be fair, pretty much describes most of Andy McDowell and William Hurt's careers, actually. Yeah, I mean what, awkward we, we, and stilted. We yes. joke about John Travolta being like a like a weird android, but uh we, William Hurt it might as well just be cardboard in this movie. Because he's just like a really yeah. like stuffy, straight laced guy. And then for whatever reason, he and Andy McDowell are just like, well, we're kind of the man and woman lead. I yeah. guess and we're contractually obligated to fuck. And he can We be, have to fuck. He, he can be good in things. He has been good in things. This just wasn't well, one see, of them. You guys, you guys are forgetting that Michael kept saying and kept insinuating the Beatles song, All You Need Is yeah, Love. Yeah. So that, it's like his whole mission of this road trip 
was to get them to fuck. You know, yeah. uh, you know, uh, brain blast here. What if Michael would just he just kept his little juju power on, and then like people just like start gravitating towards it and fucking, even if they don't really know why or really want to, it's just like so he's just Cupid. But well, like, kept, like, or like that one character in the extended universe, Star Wars, who who had the pheromones. Like Prince Shizor or some bullshit. There's oh, the green, the, the weird, like vaguely Asian, uh, the the black sun or uh, crime. Syndicate. There is a Marvel character who that's his power. Star Fox, Star Fox, brother of Thanos. Yeah. His power that, is that, that, that is a yikes, that, dog. Yeah, it's, it's not great. No. Oh, imagine that, like your brother is Thanos and your family is superpower lottery. You get pheromone control. Like that's got to be a kick in the ass. God. It's like we got a genocidal maniac or a date rapist. You choose. Like, I'm trying to find something where William Hurt wasn't stiff and stilted, and I'm not fucking He's kind of like anything. one of those actors that's always cast in that role. <laughs> I mean, that's why he's such a good Thunderbolt Ross. Yeah, I, I wonder if it's because that Fuck, all he, he is, do. isn't he? Yeah, Wait, yeah. he's the same guy? Yeah. Yeah, that's the new, not the Sam Elliott Thunderbolt Ross from the Ang Lee Hulk. The yeah, current yeah. MCU the Thunderbolt. current MCU. Yeah, yeah, that's him. That's William Hurt. He's the one from the Edward Norton Incredible Hulk, and he's been in uh, like Civil War. Yeah. He was in Black Widow. But, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, damn. Yeah, Black Widow, surprisingly good. I haven't seen it yet. I refuse to pay thirty dollars for a service. Yeah, I that's already ridiculous. Have. Yeah. yeah, or I mean, you could just go to a regular theater. Yeah, if you go on Tuesday, it's five dollars. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I just I don't care enough because. Well, Scar- I mean, I will say you're not going to give a shit any more of a shit about Black Widow. You're going to give a shit about everyone else, though. That's fair. See, so they're worth five dollars. You're yeah. like Black Widow is just an excuse that they're there. Like as soon as it's free and I don't have to drive somewhere to see it, then yeah, I'm gonna watch it. It just sounds like an excuse to me. Okay. So, Where do we go from here? Uh, uh, well, everybody's to the going theater, to, apparently. Well, well, everybody is in this movie is going to bed. You got Dorothy and Frank going to bed. You got Michael and Joey Lauren Adams going to bed. You got uh, Huey and the dog going to bed. Phrasing. Uh, yeah, I mean, phrasing. They, I mean, they don't. <laughs> come on. And, and my, you're my the one who brought it up. Ass. So, yeah. <laughs> so Captain Shimmy is a sicko confirmed. Phrasing. Because all I can think about is bestiality right well, you're now. Talking and I'm a about weirdo. Two sets of people going to bed, and then you see dude and the dog going to bed. Yeah, I know. That's because well, it was and funny. It's already, been, it's already been established that Huey is married, and he is very yes. much in love with yeah, his wife. Very much. And he misses his wife. He said it several times. And so everybody around him is getting it on, and he's laying in bed lonely, and he's like, Come here, Sparky. And it's like, at least I can have the dog next to me and not be completely alone. Is it bad I kept waiting for some sort of planes, trains, and automobiles twist where it turns out his wife was dead and he's just trying not to be sad around oh, God. everybody? <laughs> so you never wow, see that's a movie I have not thought about in years. <laughs> uh, but but then, like, if it they, is a good one. If they did that, that would, that, that would make Huey somewhat relevant to the plot of the movie. Yeah, you're right. Can't have that. No, he was, he was kind of just there. He was there for the dog. I mean, the dog. He was just there to carry. Oh, we the forgot dog. the whole story about the dog and Huey. Oh, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I've actually forgotten the story about the dog and Huey. He's, uh, he was like at the park or something, and this and this random dogs come up to him, and he's trying to shoo the dog away, and the owner of this uh, magazine sees them, and he's like, "Oh, I used to have a dog like that." And he goes, "Yeah, this is my dog." He goes, oh, my dog was named Sparky. That's funny. This dog's named Sparky. Oh, well, let me hire you for my paper. Yeah. No, no, that is what happened. Well, damn. If if that's all it takes to get a job. And they send this dog all over over the place to get pictures with random people. They have a whole wall in his office of him with all of these celebrities and world leaders. The dog is at... Uh, the freaking peace talk, Middle East peace talk. See, see, that's how you get peace in the Middle East. You just give every side a dog, and you know what? Fixes out every all the problems. Everybody's stirring up, <clears throat> waking up the next day, and uh, Dorothy has been uh, trying to get up the courage to tell uh, Frank the truth about what's really going on, but hasn't yet. And uh, then some tragedy strikes. Somebody wants <laughs> on me, though. and of course, somebody tra- ran over the dog. Yes. Oh, yeah. Tragedy is a large truck hitting 
Sparky. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and I swear to God, I thought like the way the because sh- it was kind of a, a wide shot, so the the fucking dog was far away. It kind of looked like the dog's head was broken and it would just spin all the way around. <laughs> oh God! Or spun all the way around. What I particularly enjoyed was that the closed captioning when that happened said "thud." <laughs> that was the sound effect. Just thud. Because, uh, I mean, that's what it sounded like. I well, say, just the, like how you do it. The sound, the sound effects did seem to be rather subdued because the, the tire blowing out that we got two of them <coughs> just went pop. Yeah. <laughs> Granted, that first one sounded like a gunshot. <laughs> uh, I do think it's funny that uh, essentially this dog being run over by a truck is kind of the like what kicks the plot in the gear of Pet Cemetery. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. That, yeah. That brings me that, bring, that brings me to something he said. He keeps saying in the movie because they keep asking him about a certain certain things, and he just always uh, Michael always replies that's not not my area. Yeah, because they ask him to you know help the dog, and he goes that's <laughs> not my area. What is your area, Michael? Yeah, Fucking no. Yeah, he's like super yeah, just, love just like area. booty slapping. He I is, guess uh, super frustrated at this Cheek point clapping. because Dorothy has told him the truth now. Because she feels guilty because she's the one who called for the dog and the dog ran to the road when the uh, truck came through. Even though it wasn't her fault, what have you, but, you know, she still feels guilty. And now he knows, and then he's like, you know what, bring the dog back. And again, like we said, Michael's like, this is my area. And he's just like, what the, what is your area? Explain it to me. I, well, actually, I think I gave a better delivery than he did. It yes. was more like, what is your area? Explain it to me or something like that. It was very. It, that was the most emotion he showed the whole movie, to be honest. Yeah, no, and that really wasn't was. even that much. No, no, he was very stilted. Yeah. And, and it was at this moment when I realized that this fucking movie was brown, just really, <laughs> <Yeah>. really <laughs> like tan brown. It was like oh, everybody's true. wearing like the drabest, brownest, like, like beigeiest, like, yeah. like heaviest it, clothes. Like it legit looked like a scene from a Breaking Bad for a split second. Uh, I did catch that. It was weird. <laughs> it was they, the they, they put like a, a gross filter on the. But um, that's just the age of the film. Honestly, probably. Anyway, Michael Michael gives in and um, uh, uses the last bit of the mojo he had to bring the dog back. The dog is back, but the dog gets hit by another truck. <laughs> Goddamn! Oh my god! <laughs> no, coming from the other no. direction. John Wick shows up and he's just pissed. Oh man! Everybody gets one. <laughs> so now they are hightailing to Chicago to get Michael there. Yeah, and at this point, Michael's like beacon feather disease is like fever pits. Like he's just he's molting like crazy. Yeah, there's feathers everywhere. Got something of a bird flu. Yeah. But I will say, in uh, I guess a kind of last act of kindness on uh, their part, they take him to the tallest building in the world at the time. At the time, time. yeah, the Sears Building in Chicago. 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 And then he gets a a glimpse at it, and then he falls down and he apologizes because he didn't get to finish what he was supposed to do, and then just poofs into feathers. (laughs) He does. It's just sort of like he fades away. There's just feathers. And then, then, like, then, like, the groundskeeper's like, what the fuck are y'all doing littering this feathers and shit? Get the fuck out of here. pillow fight? And some, some poor homeless guy's like, y'all saw that man just fade away too, right? I didn't. Or, like, if they go full airplane comedy, he just looks at his bottle of whiskey, goes, never again, and throws it away. <laughs> so now Huey is fired. Uh, the owner of the paper gets the dog. And Frank's like, you know what? Fuck this. And he just leaves. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is before or after he tells Dorothy, you yeah, know, we had a good time. But well, like, like they go up there, Huey doesn't get fired because yeah. Dorothy leaves because she, well, Dorothy says that can't train that dog. So uh, Bob Hoskins is stuck with guy number two, and then William Hurt says, "Yeah, fuck y'all, I'm out." Yeah, and but who he, did he just fire though? Well, he didn't fire any. He was gonna fire them, but that's when Andy McDowell no, said he was gonna fire Huey. He was, he was gonna, gonna fire gonna all. Fire, of them. I don't yeah. think he was ever gonna fire. The other guy. No, he wasn't going to fire William Hurt. He was going to fire Huey. But then Andy McDowell said, that dog can't be trained. I can't do this. And walks out. So he's like, I'm, so, I'm stuck with this guy. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah, so. They even came in and told him that uh, that Michael was a complete hoax. That it was just like fake wings and whatnot. He even had like a halo hanging on. With yeah, a it was just a weather yeah. balloon. <laughs> just uh, keeping the cover and whatnot. So. And then they walk out and that's when William Hurt reverts back to asshole. Yep. 
And then that's when uh, the movie continues for another 15 goddamn minutes. No, I, I was going to say, is like, you know, once he disappears and sort of they, they wrap up this plot, I'm kind of just like, we're still here. We're still going. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 this movie had four acts. And then, like, Frank is seeing um, angels everywhere. There's like an angel tree topper. Uh, a bunch of little girls show up on a on bus. a bus uh, dressed up as angels. They it's go. There's a. There's a. Yeah. I mean, this did come out uh, on Christmas Day. Mm. I mean, it's the 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 first act and the fourth act are kind of Christmas set. Yeah. And um, he sees that Michelangelo sign. Yeah, it's weird because you get Michael, an angel. An oh. Angel. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> like he just like <coughs> fucking shit in his pants, man. It's like whoa, and then, words are yeah. so fucking cool. He's man, like, I just shit my pants. <laughs> he's like hanging out at the bar with Huey, like uh, building a wall with ice cubes at the bar. Sugar cubes. He was eating. Sugar. Oh wait, it, did I say ice cubes? You did. I meant yeah. sugar cubes. Yeah. I'm sorry. You, well, you don't yeah. put sugar cubes in your drink. Keeps it cool. I mean, I just saw it was like a recurring theme because you know Michael loves his sugar, mm-hmm. and. Uh, it, and does then, show, it does show Andy a couple of times too doing uh, random dick off. She was on the near the same subway, like the Michelangelo yeah. side. on the other side. Oh, oh yeah, no, she was there. They go yeah. to like a coffee shop, and she wants angel food cake, which <laughs> yeah. led me to go. You know, it's been forever since I had angel food cake. In fact, I don't know the last time I'd seen it for sale anywhere. It's been a while. And uh, Frank uh, talks about, I guess, in his mind, uh, how he would imagine running into her would he. He'd walk out of the bar, and then something would tell him to go right instead of left. And then all of a sudden, a car comes around the corner, and then the tire pops, and then it's her. And then, lo and behold, he goes outside. He goes left, but a car does come around the corner, and it pops. But it's just a couple of random dudes. He asks if they need help, and they're like, no, we're good. But then, down the way, he sees a, he sees a, familiar, uh, sees a familiar person taking a little scoot down the sidewalk. And by a scoot, I mean a brisk jog. Yeah, he is just like hauling. He's scooting. And then, like, William Hurt just starts hauling ass. He's like, Michael! Just jogging for Even him. that was more emotion than he was putting into yeah, it. Yeah, this is true. He's running. He goes, Michael! 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 Michael. <laughs> it's like I'm getting heavy rain flashbacks. Jason! <laughs> Jason! And, and Jason. he's running like he's a CGI model <laughs> in a David Cage game. We put more emotion into saying Abaddon. Abaddon! Abaddon! Abaddon. Abaddon. And um, but uh, he round he rounds a corner and ends up bumping into Dorothy, who also, strangely enough, has been seeing Michael as well. But how could he be in two places at the same time? I was kind of disappointed they didn't both end up on the ground with bloody noses because they were both full fucking sprinting. Just like mm-hmm. like you hear that the coconut hit and it's like yeah. clonk. Yeah. <laughs> and this and this is where like you know again I haven't seen this movie since I was a kid, but this is where it got a little weird. It was like Only okay, slightly, yeah. Uh, Slightly. <laughs> yeah, only at this point did this movie uh, get weird. No, I'm just saying, like, you know, they, they got together. They break up. Uh, let's be real here. The, the last thing, and this also kind of bugged me, the last thing Michael was supposed to do was to get those two together. That was heavily implied. Because apparently sure. his yeah. area was making people fall in love or something. Uh, apparently. Because, like, you, you know, you, this old lady thinks that uh, he's there to take care of her because she's there alone. And then she dies. And now it she's the catalyst to get these two to fuck. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it's like that domino meme. It's like the, like the, Hulk uh, hates stairs, a multiversal war. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they, they run into each other. And then they're just like, I love you. She's like, I love you. He goes, marry me. She goes, no. He goes, marry me. She goes, no. He goes, marry me. She goes, no. It's oh, like I'm fuck. watching Walk the Fucking Line right now. And every time he says it, it's more and more flowery. Yeah. So by the last one, I was like, my dearest Dorothy, yeah. won't you please? <laughs> I'm like, dude. I, I do declare, won't you do me the pleasure of being your husband? But then Frankly, she says, dear, yes. I do not give a damn. She says yes after four times. Yeah. Uh, which is four times too many. When I someone st- says no... <laughs> 
I they s- mean no. I s- also, no. I don't think they, they, they like. They feel like they, they only known each other like yeah. three days. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, they didn't know each other that long at all. It, it wasn't like, hey, let's go back to you, uh, my place and we can just fucking share. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> we just fucking. Like, I'm ready to be the put fourth a ex-husband. fucking ring on this finger, bitch. <laughs> to be fair, to be, <laughs> to be fair, fair. Uh, to be fair. In Groundhog Day, Andy McDowell does the same thing with Bill Murray, even though we've been there with him for an hour and a half. For him, it was like. I think they said somewhere between 30 and 10,000 years. She spent a day with him. Yeah. And like they're they're are they're gonna live there now and get married and forever. So Andy McDowell just keeps falling for balding men. Is this true? Which I mean, if that's her type, I say hey, girl, you do you. Sure. So some some ladies like a bald head and a hairy back. And now they're <laughs> together, they're about to live happily ever after. And then you see Michael and Pansy show up. The ghosts. We're, I mean, I'm assuming she did. she's an angel. He's now reached double angel status, apparently. <laughs> when because when an angel like, dies, you get... See, it's like, you know, there's a lot of biblical references <laughs> of angels having multiple wings. Yeah. Apparently, you get those, you just die a bunch of and times. Like Michael said earlier in the movie, you only get 26 like visits to to Earth, I guess is and what he which said. is really short and kind of shitty on God's part. If that and like true. also really random, but like twenty six. Yeah. But how long is that number. time? I mean, like he was that was at least a few days. Yeah, I mean, shit. At least how long was he 69. with Pansy for? Yeah, a while. And it's, and it's like he's six. Eight. Wait, on, didn't she funny. say like six weeks or something funny. like that? Uh, uh, six months, uh, maybe you're six well, months. Uh, yeah, maybe? yeah, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. So okay. So he gets to come down. Uh, twenty six. 26 times in six-month intervals. Well, seven-month intervals, maybe. Yeah. Uh, he probably would have lasted long if he didn't heal a dog. Yeah. And, and then that's when, they, uh, that's when we find out that angels can freeze time, even though that hasn't happened at all in this entire movie. And then they're prancing along through the streets of Chicago. Chicago. And Chicago. they, I guess, teleport back to heaven. And then time starts again, and that's when we get the credits. Yeah, and it is the creepiest fucking shit. It's pretty spooky. Because yeah. they were aware the whole time that they were frozen in time. <laughs> it's like, like, like game it, <laughs> Michael! <laughs> <laughs> They're just Pat, freaking the fuck out. Pat, Pat can, said, can like, no, no. you can, can still you feel no. and what? You said something <laughs> you like. You can still feel and see at the whole time. <laughs> it's completely aware and just, you're just frozen. <laughs> like, oh. Like, basically WandaVision. Yeah, pretty much. Professor X. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah. I was kind of disappointed that they were in Chicago and there's no Blues Brothers crossover. That would have been fun. Oh, that's what the sequel's for. Well, well I, I feel, feel like I feel like that was like four years too early, though. Now, if it would have been, I feel in, like there should be a Blues Brothers crossover every time they're in Chicago. <laughs> I guess if it would have been like in uh, Seattle, it would have been in the Sleepless in Seattle universe. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah the same director. Would, yeah. yeah, Nora Ephron. It was like I the, mean, it might still be the same universe. Might be. You never know. I mean, which sleep is in Seattle is in the same universe as you got mail. Is it? Wait. I'm think. Wait. I'm thinking well, of when Harry met Sally. Well, they, uh, she did both of those. I well, because like Nora Ephron, the director uh-huh. of Michael, also did. You got mail. Sleep mm-hmm. was in Seattle. Yeah. Julie and Julia, bewitched, Mitsnacks, lucky numbers, and this is my life. Wow, that Lucky got numbers. worse as it went on. Lucky it? Numbers <laughs> is another John Travolta movie, mind you. Yeah, it is. Oh, no. Oof. We'll be doing that one, too. And it's the guy one. that played Huey in this movie also shows up in another John Travolta movie, uh, the sequel to Get Shorty, Be Cool. I remember that one. Be Drool. But, uh, be so, cool. yeah, um, the only other little tidbits that I have for the movie, like, are, and God... Why, why Why? does this theme keep popping up in this uh, show? According to IMDb, and I find this funny because it, it says the warning spoilers thing up top, even though this has nothing to do with the movie whatsoever. While filming the movie, the dogs were trained in a roaring river for three months for an extensive scene that was later cut from the film. Two of the dogs drowned on set during training, both dogs belonging to John Travolta named uh, Michael. Th- th- this Pat. is the set of Milo and Otis. Like, I don't, like, even this is, like, phrased weird, so I'm hoping it's not true, but Jesus Christ. 
I, that, I think that someone got their wires crossed and confused Milo and Otis with Michael. It's weird. My John Travolta was busy in 96. This was also when Broken Arrow and Phenomenon came out. I mean, he, oh, had, a, wow. he had a very full year, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I watched Phenomenon with my mom, and she just fucking bald the entire movie. <laughs> that, was, that was another movie uh, I watched a lot. Well, and it is. Yeah. Again, I do remember enjoying Phenomenon. That might be an episode in the future. But uh, before I forget, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I found the best review for this film on Letterboxd. Oh, right. well, yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> Let, let's hear it. <laughs> and I'm going to share it with everyone. Yes, please. Uh, let's see. Uh, reasons? Wh- oh, wait. I just got a letterbox notification. Huh. Oh, someone commented on his comment that I commented on. Oh, oh, oh Whoa, we got a whole huh? conversation going on live on the podcast. Oh, oh. Hey, you've still got time. Get him on the air. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the best review ever reads as follows. Reasons why Michael is a terrible movie. He gave it two stars and a heart, though. Two well, stars that, and a heart. That seems contradictory. <laughs> there, I love uh, so there are many All movies right. I do that to, though. Uh... And he just makes a list, which we like list here. Sure, we're a fan. Generic characters. Probably the worst use of the liar revealed trope I've ever seen. Weak romance. Heavily agreed. Mm -hmm. Mediocre acting for most. Agreed. Sure. Despite Travolta's terrible dancing in the bar, he he still attracts all the women. That was the most '90s dancing I've seen since. <laughs> oh, it was film. awesome. It was bad. Well, John Tra- <laughs> why does John Travolta? Does he have to like dance in every movie? Apparently, maybe he just feels the rhythm. I feel like he had he tried to uh, sneak in a, <clears throat> a little ditty in the Punisher and was removed promptly. God, I hope so. <laughs> um, this was PG when it should have been rated R. <laughs> I just thought that. I was mean, funny. '90s were different. Yeah, it's true. So cliche. There's a character named Pansy. Yeah. Ineffective and pointless villain. Now, reasons why Michael is one of cinema's greatest achievements. <laughs> John Travolta headbutts a goddamn bull. Yep. That is true. It's accurate. That, that fucking happened, dead ass. The poster is horrifying and arousing at the same time. <laughs> you, you know what? If, if that does it for you, for you, good sir, then more power Fantastic. to you. And it's arousing my stomach fluid. Even though it was whispered in the movie, this is in all caps, she died cooking us breakfast! That was a great line. Yeah, it she was. She died cooking us breakfast. A judge sexually exploits John Travolta, and the horrible implications of that are not addressed at all. I think all. it's the other way around. I, yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I can, yeah. Well, I, I mean, totally. honestly, was, like, earthly judge borderline demigod. I think the power (laughs) imbalance is in the other way. Uh, There's a character named Pansy. (laughs) She's named after the flower. (laughs) Bob Hoskins' British accent. Yeah. There's an out-of-nowhere quasi-post-breakup blues montage during the last ten minutes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, As Paul and... As John and Paul said, the apostles... No, the Beatles. That was a quote from the film. That was good. That was a, that was pretty good. Uh, most artfully edited death scene of all time. <laughs> when Pansy died, and just the egg drops. That was <laughs> hey. that was very dramatic. Yeah, uh, Sparky. Oh, yes. oh, oh yeah. yeah, Sparky yeah, yeah. ten yeah. times. Sparky uh, was awesome. John Travolta. <laughs> this was one of his better better acting performances. Yeah, I will agree. The existence of angels is treated in such a bizarre mix between casual and skeptical. Yeah. And another quote from the film, it's cookies. He smells like cookies, and the smell gets stronger when he's in heat. <laughs> and that is the best review that I found from Letterboxd. <laughs> I for forgot this movie. that line was in <laughs> that the was, movie. That was it was really during the, yeah, the, the epic battle bar scene, yeah. yeah. Like, everybody thought he smelled like, I guess, their all the favorite girls. childhood candy. dessert. Be, yeah. be more specific. All the girls yeah. thought he smelled like something, like cotton candy or cake or I forget what the other stuff was. Uh, yeah, cotton candy and uh, cake. <laughs> See, it kind. wasn't making them horny. It was making them hungry. <laughs> They're like they're they're just following him because they're like, give us food, good sir. <laughs> so apparently, the cologne companies are way off. Mm-hmm. 
So, um, yeah. Uh, that de- that uh, development has been travolted. That has. That <laughs> you know what? That was pretty travolting. Yeah, I um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm actually surprised. I like like I said earlier. Like I mean, it's not great by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> However, like, like there's a reason most people don't remember this. There movie. are a lot of dumb, silly '90s things that I enjoy about that. And, and again, like that review said, he had butts a goddamn bull. That was yeah. kind of rad. Well, I mean, one of my favorite movies is Hope Floats with Harry Connick Jr. and Sandra Bullock, and it is absolutely 90s rom-com fluff. But I love that movie. It's like a comfort movie. And it also, I need to show you guys at some point, it has probably an equal to dramatic death scene to the egg falling, (laughs) except it's even more slow motion, and then Sandra Bullock is very sad. So it was like the most dramatic rom-com death scene that I can remember from the 90s. Uh, what, probably one of the biggest things I appreciate about the film is just like the wicked sense of nostalgia I get from watching it because like this movie it just like slams you in the face with like 1990s Sunday afternoon TNT ass like yeah. just vibes <laughs> oh yeah the production so, yeah. to this movie like the cinematography is of its time oh yeah like, like, like it kind of reminds me of weirdly enough Shawshank as far as like the visual tone, not like not like the actual story or anything. You know what, <laughs> Josh Hank Redemption, Michael cinematic parallels, <laughs> and uh, Michael rem- reminds me of Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> Do not um, isolate that audio. I would also like that. Yeah, that's going on the Facebook. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> all, all the all the film nerds on Twitter are gonna be after your ass. Well, they got me. I'm not a real film nerd. <laughs> I'm a pretentious ass. I, I will say, but, but the ass is juicy as fuck. Oh, it's fat. It's thick as shit. I, it's heaving with juice. <laughs> ass juice. I got. I got heaving cheeks. I don't. I don't think this is going the direction where you want to go. <laughs> we finish. We finish talking about the movie. Now comes the weird shit. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, someone. One of our listeners is going to see me in real life, and they're going to be like. Wow, you just told a lie from the pits of hell <laughs> on the podcast. You I, do not have a I, thick I, ass. I will say, I am now uh, really curious to see uh, who plays the better angel, uh, Nicolas Cage or John Travolta. What, what movie does Cage... City of Angels. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, apropos. Yeah, that that is also, a Nick Cage I movie. remember that one well enough to go ahead and say it's Nicolas Cage. Okay, we yeah. we shall see. <laughs> I have not seen that but movie. I kind of doubt However, he had butts and animals in that movie. From that uh, movie soundtrack is still one of my favorite songs. But I do want to see that very one. You know, I met right Johnny there. Resnick once. Really? Yeah, I was a kid. Uh, it, it was at City Stages in Birmingham. Yeah, and a friend slash drug dealer of my father's oh, wow. took us up there. Lovely. And uh, Johnny Resnick was sitting next to Gary Busey. And I got to meet them both because I was a small child. They fucking ignored my parents, but I was a kid who was clearly out past his bedtime and wanted to go home. So they were really cool to me. <laughs> and you're all and you're around these just scary people. Uh, and you didn't have a samurai sword for them to sign. No, I, did, I didn't have anything for them Man. to sign. I was an eight-year-old. At that point, I only recognized Gary Busey from being cut in half in Predator 2. And and, but Gary Busey was just like chattering his teeth. And, How are you, little boy? A movie an eight-year-old probably shouldn't have seen. Correct. But <laughs> I wasn't like, they were both very, very nice. Which was which is pleasant. It's one of my favorite childhood memories. Mm. Yep. Uh, oh, Jimmy has a good childhood story. <laughs> Crazy, right? Well, it was wrapped around drug addict oh, parents oh, yeah, taking yeah, yeah, me yeah. to uh, a very sad story about midnight the, concert. The, uh, the the song that you were just describing from City of Angels. If you want me to bring the whole podcast down, sure. Why not? Let's yeah, go. We got time. Uh, that movie is the last movie I saw with my very best friend Lynn, who died of leukemia, and yeah. At her wake, uh, she she ran a karaoke system here in town, and for her wake, her friend ran the karaoke system, and we all sang a song. I sang that song with the pretent with the intro of "This Is the Last Movie That We Saw Together," and everybody was crying. Yeah, no, that brought it down for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, honestly, <laughs> I don't think you can pull the sad story from childhood bit anymore. That was sad. Yeah, no, that um, was sad. I it. It's really bad to be speechless on uh, something that you need to be talking on. <laughs> uh, for most, <laughs> I don't. God, now I'm laughing. What the fuck? Okay, so uh, we we hope. Um, uh, shit, I don't know what to do from here. <laughs> <laughs> I love how the 
the, uh, the train derailed right as it was getting to the station. Oh my god! All right, so like, just turned over. Well, let's, we, let's do a quick preview. Our car. Yeah, do a quick preview of what's coming up uh, in the world of caging greatness. Yeah, let's do that uh, and just try to forget how sad Frank just made us. But uh, so. I'll bring it back just a smidge by saying that oh, 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 Mac Cardona is the GCW World Heavyweight Champion, and it's the best thing ever. And you know that is pretty great. But exactly. you know what else? Speaking of Chicago, oh, oh we Chicago, got, oh, we got a pretty good shot here. Oh, it's a pretty of a good CM shot. Punk return, oh, and yeah. this week especially because you know there's all the hype. Uh, maybe like if they announce something, I'm wearing a different CM Punk shirt every day because I adore that man, and yeah. I'm so excited. That he might be coming to AEW, which is on Wednesday nights on TNT. At Not 7 a sponsor. Not a sponsor, but God, God wouldn't that imagine? be great? <laughs> <sighs> of, of all the jackasses that watched uh, AEW, uh, they had podcasts, which I'm sure there's plenty. Uh, the, we're the ones that get it. Yep. It's like we're gonna have Evo Uno on the show, uh, watching Vampires Kiss with us. Oh god, tonight. that'd be amazing! That would be fantastic. Wouldn't we it? We, just, we just have a series where we have all the Dark Order people. Yes. Well, I mean, Ken and I are technically members according to their criteria. We got the emails. This is true. I'm I got sure it like months after the fact, but yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there are thousands of people, but you know, we're members. <laughs> So anyway, uh, upcoming on Cajun Greatness, <coughs> uh, today obviously was Travolta Development. That's right. I, I'm sure you already knew that, having listened to our bullshit for the what? last hour and a half. Next week is going to be a Martin Scorsese film called Bringing Out the Dead that I'm, I'm very excited for because I love... That was one of the ones I was looking forward to. I love this movie. Now, it's weird enough I think we're going to have a lot to talk about. But it might also be a Raising Arizona situation where not a lot of the show is about the movie. But we'll just see how that plays out. I'm always it's down. It's a movie so good we have nothing to discuss. I'm always down for Cage movies I have not seen. Uh, then August 12th will be Uncaged, where we will spin the wheel and absolutely go by whatever the wheel lands on. Definitely. And definitely not pick something Lock else. it in. Write it yeah. down. We're totally to doing Creed want. retrospective finally. <laughs> put that in the universe. Y'all put Michael in the Are universe. we dead set? <laughs> We're keeping everything that's on the wheel as it sits right now. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we got sure. to, we had, I think there's a couple things we needed to switch out, actually. Yeah, because we, we, I feel like have the a, bad writing, dramatic reading is just scrapped yeah um because we did add a couple of things but we'll we'll get to that and we're definitely going to go with whatever the wheel lands on yes yep unless we don't so we got to film it at least for like tiktok or something right do we still post things on that you know we did the last time that we spun the wheel and that was the most recent tiktok which was back in May. It was a while. <laughs> wow, it's almost fucking August. Yeah. I, God, this year has flown by yeah, so fast. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, with TikTok, I honestly feel like TikTok is starting to go down on the decline. Cause, really? Yeah, I, I really do, because you don't hear about it as much. The, uh, apparently, they're banning a lot of big name original creators trying to make way for you know, pop stars and, and they're like curated sort of Oh God, people. they're YouTubing TikTok? They, that's what it seems oh, wow. like. They're YouTubing TikTok. Great. So I don't know. That might not be a thing like, like as we know it for one well, minute. Well, it's time to predict the new um, hit album or app for the kids. We call it uh, Farm Flame. We'll start our own. We'll call ba- it Flim. No, no. We'll start our own based off of what we do here at Caging Greatness. We will call it Nick Talk. You know what? You can TM, 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 TM. With all, with all <laughs> That's Nicolas ours. Ca- That's ours. You cannot steal it. All Nicolas Cage filters from different Nicolas Cage movies. You're goddamn right. It, it's a lot like that Jeremy Renner app, but it's, this time it's going to stick around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then August 12th, we have Bangkok Dangerous. Yeah. Uh, oh. September 2nd is scheduled for Wicker Man, but we might need to move that around. September 16th will be my birthday episode. Whoa. 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 There are a handful of things that I'm thinking Whoa. we watch. And as of right now, if you want a little, little insight, Uh-oh. I'm leaning towards Street Fighter 1994. Uh-oh. Oh, they, I would be 100% They changed his mind again. I'm not hating that idea. That's where I'm leaning. Like I said, there's a list, but that's yeah. where I'm leaning. At least. Uh, then September 30th, Mandy. Uh, October 7th is another Uncaged. <clears throat> October 14th is Vampire's Kiss, which we will hopefully have... Uh, uh, evil Uno. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hopefully have our friend J.R. Mounts. Yeah, that's going to uh, be for fun. For that one, that should be fun. And then October 21st is Snake Eyes. I don't remember <laughs> why we put it there. Hmm. I think it's something to do with the actual Snake Eyes movie. But then that came out in July, so we don't yeah, have to do that. They then. completely <laughs> fucked us over, so we might we might move Snake Eyes around. 
because that movie, I do remember that movie very well, and it's pretty fucking depressing. Oh no, not as bad as Eight Millimeter, and I don't mean like depressing, like oh that's sad. I mean like you feel bad as a person because huh. Eight Millimeter's fucked up. Have y'all seen Eight Millimeter? I no, have it's I about have snuff not. films. I, I have, yes. Yeah, it's fucked up. Uh, also, Joaquin Phoenix is in it. Hmm. One of his first roles. Oh, oh, that's like, oh, oh, hell of a place to start. He dies a brutal death. So uh, Spoiler. <laughs> and then October 28th is the double feature Ghost Rider 1 and 2 with our special guest. Big shout out to Postman Frank. Postman Frank, we love you. Woo! You're right there. Yeah, I'm right here. Postman you're right Frank, there. if you're in the house, say, say what? No. But see, I, I'm, sh- I'm shouting you out now. For when you listen to this episode later. So future postman Frank, I love you, buddy. Yeah. He's just like, no. <laughs> it's like, wherever you, wherever you are, Frank, we love you. <laughs> I'm right here, you assholes. Fuck. Damn, we're like listening out the rest of the year. <laughs> oh, no, that was it. Frank turned oh, that was into it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> we, we haven't gotten to November or December. Say, that is, I don't think that's me. I think that's more Mickey Mouse. Well, I'm not good at the Frank impersonation. No, you're not. Can't Canon can't is. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, why did you talk to yourself just there, Frank? That was weird. That was weird. That was pretty weird. I don't know. <laughs> Me. Whole episode, nothing but that. <laughs> oh, I mean, hmm, that nice. would be an interesting episode, wouldn't it? Which <laughs> one is canon? Which one is Frank? You decide. And Epic then, rap battles of history. And then, then at the end, we, we had to figure out which one to shoot. Uh, well, uh, I, I guess it's a good time to kind of wrap it up. Yeah. Anybody else got any final thoughts on the movie or not, not really. anything in general? CM Punk, we best in the world. This time. We, I, we, we were, we did a great Nose job. to the grindstone on this one. Yeah. Like Cannon's just sitting there, like we know, goddamn it, we're going to talk about this fucking movie, and he kept us on track. Hey, I tried. To, I tried to keep. I think we have a perfect blend, a perfect mishmash of uh, bullshit and real talk in this one. Yeah, and I think good. we all deserve to give ourselves a small, tiny golf clap. Congratulations! 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 So, um, oh, also, I'm uh, wondering. Um, if Michael was in a fight with an Ava unit, uh, who would win? How many toddlers do you think Michael could win in a fight against? Okay, before we go. <laughs> Never mind. Before we go, I do have a final thought. Okay, first off, Pat. Uh, I've already, it's been so long now, I've already forgot. Uh, what was the argument? Who started the argument about how many four-year-olds you can take on? In, in combat. Well, good night, everybody. No, <laughs> God damn it. We, I got to get this out now. I'm tired of not. Uh, well, if, we're, if we are going to do it. Uh, it's gonna, I'm going to give the short abridged version because there's really not a lot to say, but I, I it, it's been a long time coming. People want to know. Do they? Yeah, I mean, they've been commenting left and right. I'm Have getting they? them. Yeah, Jason Momoa really wants to know. Really? Yeah. <laughs> My close friend. We haven't friend, heard Jason Momoa. much from him because he's yeah, been he's like. He's a busy man. I don't, you know, I don't believe any of the things he's Busy dyeing his hair blonde. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, yeah the whole fighting uh, four year olds just started as a, co- a, a conversation between the AYC8 lads, and that's. Spun out of our watching of uh, Amazon Prime original series Invincible, <laughs> which is you should all go out and watch. It's, yeah. it's uh, fantastic, and basically the idea is if you were to fight a horde of four-year-old children, a la the uh, Dynasty Warriors video games, how many do you think you could take? And uh, my original number was around four thousand. But uh, a couple of days later, I ended up going uh, to see my dad, and my uh, stepbrother's girlfriend's kids were there, and <laughs> they, they wouldn't stop chasing the cat. So I was just like, hey, stop chasing the cat. And then I just looked at uh, my brother, and I was just like, hey, um, how, how, how old is he? <laughs> he? He goes, oh, he's four. I was like, and that's when I beefed oh, my number up to seventy five hundred. I don't. <laughs> I disagree. You're gonna get tired. No, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, it, it, it. Look, we we have not established. It's not like it's not like World War Z. 
They're not zombie baby. They're not like rage monsters. No, I'm like unarmed. You've never babysat over a dozen kids at one time. I'm saying you don't if, know. You don't know. They what are bloodlusted, <laughs> and they're coming after you. Just from your answer, I'm going to uh, uh, postulate that guess that you've never babysat. Right. A large number of children. I have definitely helped on. babysit a large amount of children before. Like, I'm just saying. It's not they, fun. They are I'll say blood that. Lusted, Bloodlusted four-year-olds. What weapons? There's so many factors. Like, do you have a I'm weapon? I'm going to use the bowling ball method first. I'm going to run <laughs> at them at full speed and go sideways and just take out, like, a huge number. I'm going to grab one and just start swinging. You're going to throw yourselves into their tiny little clutches. And I feel they're going to rip you apart, man. Nah. They're blowing. One of them's going to get your leg. You're going to slow down. It, they're just going to pile on top of you. You're you're fucked. I'm saying I'm not saying I would survive the entire onslaught. I'm just saying I could take out. A, a, I think a, the general idea was to tell you, how many do you take out before you're overwhelmed? 7, I honestly, th- I would be <laughs> happy to get to thirty, realistically. <laughs> Because, because you're, it's like horror mode, but with children. Right. And if they're bloodlusted, 30 is going to be tough. It's like, a, a again, gift. depending on the weapon you have, I think a daikatana would be a good one. You know, uh, so I, I feel like with a daikatana and some prep time, you know, make sure I'm you know, as, as fit and ready as I can be, you know, not sleepy, not thirsty, not hungry. I, I think probably 30, maybe 35 if they're bloodlusted. I don't know. I'm just but because I'm just, you're gonna hit, like even if you you clock one kid, unless that is <laughs> unless you knock that kid out, they're going to get back up. I I am just going by the Weekly Planet's rules where we are on we are on an empty football field. I'm on one side, thousands of kids on the other. No weapons, no nothing, and we just oh god, kill. if they're charging you, no, you're gonna throw yourself into them. And you're dead. You get zero. No, I can get seven thousand of them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also like handle. Batman Dark Tomorrow. If you don't handcuff the children, they'll get back up. Anyway, that's the origin. God, that was of that. a horrible fucking game. <laughs> that's the origin of that really stupid story. <laughs> well, with that being said, I guess it's time to do some plugging and uh, get on out of here. What do you think? Plugging and chugging. So uh, I'm going to try this. It's okay. going to be Garbo, but I'm going to do it anyway. No, I think it's going to be fine. Oh, Give got credit. the plug oh, out. Stuff. Ready? Thank you. thank you so much. Well, and I want to thank everyone who has given this uh, episode of Travolting Development a listen. Just wanted to remind everybody that we do have a merch store. It is tpublic.com slash user slash Cajun Greatness? That's the one. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I am Ron Burgundy today. <laughs> you can find us on SoundCloud, Spotify, TuneIn, um, Apple. Every, Apple, all those Google. Google podcast. I'm sorry, I'm literally going by the LinkedIn list right Crackle. now. Crackle. <laughs> Anywhere list you listen face. to podcasts, Anywhere. we're there. Uh, and of course, we're in a car sure. with you when you go to work. And we'll be on YouTube soon enough. Not for videos, just the old episodes. I just haven't oh, yeah. around to it. Very busy. purposes. No, Jimmy. <laughs> Jimmy's actually going to animate the whole show on Microsoft Paint. Oh God, that'd be ugh, no. I don't have anywhere near enough time for anything close to that. Mm. And you know, don't forget, you can always follow us on our socials. Pretty sure we're on the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the Twitters, the, the TikToks, and of course, Letterboxd. Yeah, no, Big we're fan all of Letterboxd here on this show. Yep, yep. And uh, and I have been uh, the host today. I am that Cannon guy. You can find me at that Cannon guy on Facebook, Twitter, and Letterboxd. I am, of course, Captain Chimmy. Uh, you can find me at uh, Captain Chimmy's Kind of Art, Captain Chimmy's Almost Music. You can find me at the comic strip here in Tuscaloosa. You want to come buy a comic, maybe Invincible. We have Invincible. The comic is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, you know, if you enjoyed this episode, leave us a comment with how many four-year-olds you think you could take down before they kill you. <laughs> yes. Because I'm curious to see your numbers if you're realistic or way out there. <laughs> so, be realistic like me. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's where you can find me uh, or here. I'm always here. I have no life. Please, no. Jimmy says in me. our house. I mean, at this point, I'm here about as much as I'm at my own fucking house. Yep. But I'm still at the shop more. I called the shop home the other day <laughs> by accident. You know, I think I think you might need to see someone about that. I think I might need a fucking vacation. Yeah, you do. Anyway. Uh, my name is Jonathan. You can follow me on Twitter at J-O-N-I-I-B-O-I-24 and John Johnson12 on Letterbox. And I just have one request for all the listeners. Read Chainsaw Man. It's fucking great. You'll thank me later. It is pretty good. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about it. <sighs> brum, brum. Yeah. Pat brum, has most of them. I'm still trying to get you volume three. They're still back ordered. Oh, it's okay. I'm just indefinitely borrowing Wenzel's until you get it for me. <laughs> well, there you go. I like I like I'm in, I'm definitely borrowing a lot of things from Wenzel, <laughs> and he just gave me something else to, online, so he might not get that back either. <laughs> 
Anyway, all right, uh, this is Patrick. Thank you all uh, so much for listening. I hope you had a good time because we certainly did. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd at John Lost His Name in My Art on Facebook at John Lost His Name Art. And while you're already online, why don't you go over to the AYCH feed? If you're listening to this, the, the week it come out, and that would be the week of July 26th. On uh, Monday, we released an episode, episode 222, where the lads go to Bucky's. It's where we go to that famous Beaver Thing gas station to try a whole bunch of food. And spoiler, a lot of it's really good. And we have some, some good talk about that. Get your beaver nuggets. Oh, Any God. crinkling you heard during this episode was all of us snacking on Bucky's food. Yes, Just so uh, you know. I, I, I was still, I was eating Bucky's food for dinner today, and it was. Uh, we would apologize for the crackling during the episode, but we don't care that much. <laughs> it, it wasn't was the course this time; it was just uh, us eating. This is rappers. <laughs> On Tuesday, uh, July twenty seventh, oh, there's the episode zero of Tanner's spinoff show. Our third spin, our, our third show, second spinoff. Wow, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, the the network is taking off. And uh, and this episode is just sort of him setting the stage for what his show will be. It was feel like a late night talk show style where he interviews people, tries some fun things, and sort of just t- takes his own little spin, his Tanner flavor to the podcast game. And I hear and, it's got a fantastic theme song. Yeah, you, you might hear uh, some familiar tunes to that if you listen closely. And lastly, on July 30th, uh, it's a Friday, you can be looking forward to AYCH's uh, summer anime review is where we really, uh, reveal and review six six episodes of debut anime series from this summer season, and uh, I think it'll be a good time there too. So you have a lot to listen to, and we there will be a test. There will, <laughs> will be there? a fucking test. Fuck, I, I don't want to do a test. I'm going to just write my name on the anime one and just turn it in. Look, when I left school, I was <laughs> promised no more tests, all right? That's why I quit being a teacher. No, yeah. Actually, there's a lot more tests, but it's just like your endurance as a person. God damn it. <laughs> Frank, uh, where can we find you? Uh, you can follow my really lame and very seldom post Instagram at swarly1145 if you are really desperate, but that's pretty much it. And Frank, thank you for being on the show. It's You're been another blast. It's good to have you. Whoop, whoop. Congratulations. I need to quit doing the whoop, whoop. People are literally are going to think I'm in the, uh, the fucking a Juggalo gang. Hey. <laughs> hey, Fago. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> and, and, and our Fago episode was a lot of fun. Go listen to that listen one. Listen to that one, too. Well, everyone. I, I mixed all the Fagos together and drank them, and it was nasty. That sounds awful. It was a Fago suicide, and, and it was uh, Jet Black in that cup. Oh, yeah. It oh. was the void. <laughs> well, thank you for listening, everyone. We will catch you next time. Mm. Good night. Good night. Brum, brum. Oh, shit. Frank is already gone. What the fuck? God damn it, Frank. We haven't <laughs> stopped. Yeah. Yeah. We're literally walking away right now. Bye. Bye. It's a travolting development. His movies are kind of shit. 15 years without a hit. Hey. It's John Travolta.